Hi, my name's Kristen. I am a 29 year old person and I am a full time artist. If you're clicking on this video, maybe you have seen some of my vlogs or other videos here on YouTube, or maybe you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, or maybe you've never seen me before and you're taking a chance on a random YouTube video that was recommended to you. Either way, hi. The story that I wanna tell you today is the story of how I arrived here, how I became a full-time artist, what feels like a kind of complicated story because it's also kind of the story of my life. So yeah, this is the story of my artistic journey and I hope that you enjoy it. Here we go. I was born and raised in a small town in Northern California. I was always a creative kid, like most kids, I think. I really loved coloring and drawing, and my parents bought me these spiral-bound sketchbooks from the local drugstore to draw in at around age six. I still have a huge love for sketchbooks, and they're a big part of my art practice. My mom signed me up for summer art classes in elementary school and in high school I went to a performing arts camp. I feel really lucky that my parents and other adults around me recognized my interest in art and made an effort to cultivate it and encourage me. Whenever adults would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I always said I wanted to be an artist. And if you were one of those kids, you can probably guess that I got mixed reactions whenever I gave that response. I feel like the older I got, the more the response was challenged and met with criticism or discouragement. I didn't know any adults who were professional artists, nobody I knew did either, and the super small town we lived in didn't really have any art galleries or anything resembling an art scene. My public high school didn't have AP art or really any extra art opportunities, and my school guidance counselor and teachers strongly discouraged me from applying to college as a studio art major. I was sort of steered by everyone into graphic design because that's a real job that artsy people do, I guess. My parents are not particularly artistic people. They both work in the medical field and I think they would both describe themselves as outdoorsy. My childhood involved a lot of sports and camping and rock climbing in the Sierras. Some of my favorite memories from growing up involve playing in the woods with my brother and drawing in nature by a lake or a campsite. In high school, I got really into rock climbing with my friends and I was on our high school's downhill ski team. Those activities definitely took precedence over making art at the time, both culturally and just time-wise. When I was in high school, I definitely imagined my future as a sort of dirt bag, probably doing a bunch of different jobs and working just to ski or climb. I always really hated school, especially high school, and I just felt so bored and restless inside under fluorescent lights, and I felt so trapped and uncomfortable when asked to sit still for hours. I feel like I really only made it through school because I was somewhat crafty and I did okay at reading and writing. I had to take chemistry three times and I was one of those kids who would sob at the dinner table trying to do math homework. When it was time to decide what to do after high school, college was kind of the only option. I really did not want to stay in California and I couldn't get into any UC schools with my grades anyway. My parents agreed to pay for me to go to school at a university anywhere that I could get accepted to the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program, also known as WUI, which means that you can get reduced like out-of-state tuition at certain schools in the West. I only applied to three schools, Western Washington University, the University of Utah, and Montana State University. I put together a portfolio of my best artwork from summer camp and high school art classes and got into all three schools' art programs. I ended up choosing MSU partially because I just felt more called to Montana and partially because the other schools didn't have dedicated graphic design majors at the time and I was a bit freaked out by choosing studio art, partially because I just couldn't see myself being a professional gallery artist and graphic design seemed like the responsible thing to major in. In retrospect, I would have been so perfect for an illustration program. I was super inspired by illustrated books and graphic novels and animation and I had been obsessively drawing comics of things that had happened in my daily life and my journals. The graphic design that I liked was very illustration heavy, but I didn't really know at 18 that being an illustrator was a job or even something that you could major in. So I majored in graphic design. Uh, like I said, I never really liked school, but I felt uniquely unprepared and overwhelmed by my college classes. I strongly suspect that I have undiagnosed ADHD and I just really struggled to keep my assignments straight manage my time and straight up cope at the college level. The way that our art program was structured was that the first two years were fundamentals and then you could choose more of a specialty later in the program. 
All art majors had a portfolio review at the end of our first year, and since it was mainly fundamentals like photography and drawing, I passed that review just fine. But the graphic design majors had a separate portfolio review at the end of the, our second year, which was when we took our more design-specific classes. And I really struggled in those design classes. There was added pressure and competitiveness because our class of 30 or so students would be cut in half to 15 at the end of the year portfolio review. I'm not sure why it needed to be such a brutal cutoff, but the resulting atmosphere was insanely tense. There was this fear of failure looming over all of us, and I didn't really make friends with anyone in class because we were all looking over our shoulders assessing who would be cut. The critiques were brutal, and I would often have panic attacks before bringing my work in for critique, and I dealt with a level of anxiety I had never experienced before in my life. My general disorganization, fear of failure, inability to meet deadlines, and in retrospect, my straight-up disinterest in type-based graphic design resulted in me being one of the students that got cut at the end of the year portfolio review. I was encouraged by my professors to reapply or apply as a studio art major, but I was so discouraged that I decided to drop out of school altogether. I threw away a bunch of art supplies, packed up my college room into my Jeep Cherokee, and decided that I was going to live out my dirtbag dreams. I lived out of my car, river guiding in the summer and teaching skiing in the winter. I had a lot of fun, and I made almost no art. In the off-season, I would either travel, working odd jobs like substitute teaching at preschools when I needed extra money. After a few years of seasonal work, I got kind of tired of working outside and the instability of changing jobs every six months. So I decided that I would accept a full-time position at one of the Montessori schools I had subbed at. And I loved it. I loved the kids and I loved reading to them and making art with them. And I was so inspired by the illustrations and their picture books that I started drawing again. And since I wasn't living in my car anymore, I had a little bit more space. So I even made a few paintings when the inspiration struck, but I just saw it as a hobby. After a while, my parents and my boss at Montessori were really encouraging me to finish college. So I ended up re-enrolling at MSU in 2017, which was a year after most of my friends had graduated. I had been kind of politically activated by the 2016 election, and I wanted to major in something that would allow me to do something somewhat social justice oriented. I also wanted the option to still work in Montessori schools without committing to an education degree. After working a few jobs in the real world, I realized just how unsuited I was for success in graphic design. I'm not a naturally super detail-oriented person, and spending hours on my computer in an office working for a corporate design firm sounded like an actual nightmare to me. For some reason, going back to school at 23, I felt like I couldn't go back and study art, so I majored in community health and human development. It felt like a safe and smart option and a feasible route to just getting this undergraduate degree that I felt like everyone else wanted me to get. So I worked on my degree while teaching part-time, and in my free time, I had a little polymer clay earring business on Etsy, which was my creative outlet and filled me with so much joy. I fantasized about one day being able to quit teaching and just focus on this small creative business. In the fall of 2019, I was working part-time, had a part-time internship, and was running my Etsy shop and was enrolled in a full load of college credits when I got sick. I had what felt like a cold for a few weeks and suddenly felt really weak and tired all the time, but I chalked it up to my busy schedule. I fell while mountain biking and my entire body was covered with bruises, even though I felt like I didn't fall that dramatically and I don't bruise easily. My mouth was bleeding a lot when I was brushing my teeth and my lymph nodes in my neck were swollen and tender, and I ended up going to the student health clinic on campus between class and my internship. A nurse practitioner thankfully listened to my concerns and ordered blood work, which is when they saw that my white blood cell count was dangerously high. A few hours later, I was loaded onto an emergency life flight to Salt Lake City from Bozeman, where I was diagnosed with blood cancer, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Montana has pretty rural healthcare, and my condition was rare and needed to be treated at a major cancer research hospital, so I spent a month in the hospital getting chemo in Salt Lake City, then transferred to UC Davis in California to be closer to my family. Suddenly, I was 25 years old, rendered pretty instantly infertile by treatment, lost all my hair, including my eyebrows and eyelashes, 
I was sick and swollen from steroids and all of my friends, community, and worldly possessions were a thousand miles away in Montana. Thankfully, my partner Taylor was able to negotiate a remote position with his job and we both moved into my childhood bedroom when we weren't sleeping in the hospital. I actually don't know what I would have done without Taylor being there. I felt really grateful to have my family help out and take us in, but to be stripped of my independence so instantly was earth shattering. With side effects from treatment, the forced isolation of being severely immune compromised and my mental state combined, I really couldn't focus on anything. Books and movies and music, it just all seemed like a meaningless distraction from this nightmare that I was waking up in every day. The only thing that could quiet my mind and help me pass time was sitting up in bed and playing mindlessly with a cheap watercolor set that my friend Riley had sent to my hospital room. I wasn't even painting anything, I was just mixing colors and doodling little flowers. A lot of people knew that I was artistic, so the main I'm sorry you have cancer gift I got was coloring books and sketchbooks and art supplies. For Christmas that year, my mom got me an iPad and an Apple Pencil, and I started making little doodles and cartoons when I didn't have enough energy to fill up a cup of water to paint. Pretty early on, I found out that I would need to have a bone marrow transplant, which involved a month-long stay in an airlocked isolation room and intense chemo and radiation to destroy my faulty immune system. I would need to diligently avoid all germs and viruses while I built my baby immune system back up from zero. My transplant was scheduled for February of 2020. I was discharged from the hospital in mid-March. I had lost 20 pounds and still wasn't eating solid foods when my little sister came home from high school for the last time for spring break. COVID was so isolating and hard for so many people and I'm very privileged in a lot of ways especially to have access to a backyard and a family to spend those weird quarantine days with. Even though I had studied public health in school and so many people had reached out during my cancer diagnosis to offer me anything I needed, I lost a lot of friends during the pandemic to misinformation and selfishness. I was the most high-risk person that I knew, and it was an insanely tricky time to be a cancer patient. After my transplant, I started to recover. I was riding my bike when I felt well enough and laying in the sun reading, doing a lot of really bad, ugly art that was more art therapy than creation. Taylor and I were eventually able to return to Montana that summer, and I saw my apartment again for the first time in nine months. We adopted a kitten, Miss Nora Jones, and I enrolled in school, again, this time completely online. In September of 2020, a biopsy found leftover cancer cells in my bone marrow and treatment was a continuous drip of very expensive immunotherapy that ran 24 seven from a tube connected to a pump in a fanny pack connected to a central line in my arm. I was on this drug for four long months and my immune system tanked again. I would see friends occasionally for walks or bike rides outside, but I couldn't do much other than online school and mess around with watercolor in my apartment. I had been sharing a few pieces of art here and there to my personal Instagram, but in December of 2020, I started a new account where I only posted art and I named it Little Tiny Egg. Little Egg was Taylor's nickname for me all the times that I was very bald. It made me feel cute and funny instead of like a freakish alien. I also have always liked eggs, like I love eating them and I love birds and eggs have kind of grown on me as a metaphor for a lot of different things like beginnings and mystery, strength and fragility, the perfection of nature and newness and the circular nature of the universe. I don't know, it just kind of stuck. That spring, I started a 100-day project where I made a sketchbook spread and posted it to my Instagram every single day for 100 days, which is kind of what kickstarted my social media accounts. I also started posting process videos to TikTok around that time, and I started to notice that people were interested in my art. I had a lot of fun making content while I explored different art styles and subject matter. I felt so free artistically at that time, and everything I had just experienced resulted in me being just unafraid of being cringy or making bad art. My immunotherapy treatment ended and I had a short remission, which is when I finally graduated college and Taylor and I took off on a bike tour of the west coast. There's a whole video about that here. 
The trip gave me a lot of confidence in my body and I brought a sketchbook along to document the first time that I had felt free and alive in actual years. <laughs> After we got home from our bike tour, I started work full-time at a nonprofit and I sold stickers and art prints and a few random originals and illustration client projects while making art obsessively in my free time. That fall, my cancer came back again, more aggressive than ever, and I had a repeat of everything that had happened in 2019. Being life lighted, moving back in with my parents, had to quit my job and leave my friends, and Taylor and I had to do long distance this time. I was so discouraged and defeated. It felt like every time I clawed my way back to my old life, the floor was ripped out from underneath me. My odds of surviving treatment were terrible, COVID wasn't going anywhere, and I experienced extreme suicidal ideation while in isolation in the hospital again for months. I actually felt like I was being tortured, and the only thing that kept me alive was my art practice. Whenever I felt good enough to sit up, I would be drawing or painting, and when I didn't feel well, I would watch any form of art on YouTube to keep me company. I was the most sick I had ever been, and at one point, leukemia cells in my cerebral spinal fluid caused my eyesight to go dark and blurry until I could get my next treatment. I thought I was going to go blind, and all I could think about was how if I did lose my eyesight, I would still try to make art, even if I could only see blurry shapes and color. In December of 2021, I received an experimental treatment called CAR T cell therapy, which put me into remission that I'm currently in today, a year and some change later. In that year, Taylor and I moved to Salt Lake City where we could access the opportunities of a larger city while remaining in the Inner Mountain West and I could have access to some really great hospitals. I applied for some random jobs once I started feeling better, but nothing really stuck. And in the meantime, I decided that I would fully dedicate myself to my art practice. It's been a year since we moved and between my very measly disability payments that I won't qualify for for much longer and selling my art, I haven't needed to find a different job. I recognize that I have had a lot of privilege on this journey and have had my family and a mutual aid fund to help with some of my medical expenses, which let me just say the American healthcare system is more toxic than any chemotherapy. I should also mention that the treatments I received have had some serious detrimental physical and mental side effects, leading me immune compromised to the point where I now consider myself chronically ill and disabled. I don't have any shame around that and I'm in the never-ending process of unpacking my internalized ableism and trying to contextualize all the traumatizing things that have happened to me in the last few years. But right now, I proudly call myself a full-time artist. For the first time in my life, I find myself participating in a community of artists, which might surprise you if you only think Mormons and BYU when you think of Utah, which that's fair. In the last year, I've participated in several local art markets, an artist working group, and a gallery show with other disabled artists. I started the Salt Lake Sketchbook Society, which is a social group where we meet up and make art in community. I go to a weekly figure drawing class to hone my skills, and in May, I'll be apprenticing at a mural festival. This summer, I'm going to my very first artist residency. I make gouache and acrylic paintings, hand-painted polymer clay pieces, block-printed designs, do some tattoo commissions and gig posters, have done some illustration for logo design, worked with Be The Match on an illustrated fundraising campaign, and I design products for my online store. I also make videos here on YouTube where I share my sketchbook and art process and life updates. I've written a lot of various different artist statements recently, but I think for me, my art will always be about translating what I experience into something beautiful. I feel like I have this acute awareness now of how short and finite our experiences on this earth are, and I want to share what I see while I'm here with the world. Whew, that's a lot. <laughs> the point of this video was to lay out the winding and maybe atypical story of how I got to become a full-time artist. Even though I kind of feel like I just started making art seriously at 29 years old, I try to share any advice or things I learn on my channel here, as well as vlogs of what I get up to, and you can subscribe to follow along on the journey and see what's next for me and for Little Tiny Egg. 
just wanted to say thank you for watching this entire video if you made it all the way to the end thank you if you're still here i want to encourage you to go to be the match.org and either make a financial donation or if you're healthy and under 40 i think you can have them send you a free swab in the mail to see if you could possibly be a bone marrow donor for somebody especially if you are not white or mixed race there are a lot of people out there looking for a bone marrow match you could potentially be that person for someone which is really cool again thank you for watching and i'll see you next time okay Bye.